Greetings, survivors and friends, Shadow Franks here, and today I have some big news for you regarding vehicles in Rust. Hot and fresh out of the rusty garage. Early on today, I was umming and ahhing about whether to make a video because I wasn't sure whether you'd appreciate experiencing deja vu, as pretty much everything in this month's update's been covered quite well by yours truly already, but then. I got some rather hot news, and as every day is Groundhog Day for most of us at the moment anyway, I thought, why not? So, after months of careful tinkering, the plan currently is to open up vehicles for public testing this month on Monday the 18th. This will happen on the staging branch, initially in a separate beta, and then, after June's update, on staging itself. The plan then is to merge them to the main release branch, that's the one most of you play on normally in July's update, which means there'll be plenty of time to break things during May and June so that hopefully when they're finally rolled out for everyone, it's not an exhausting experience for the team. I also, as you can see, managed to snaffle a few new shots of said vehicles in their current state, along with the vehicle lift, which will be necessary for customising them and will be something that players can deploy in their bases. The textures and models look a bit different to last time we saw them, and you'll notice that there will be a huge variety of options when cobbling them together. For instance, there's armour sections, different seating plans, and storage modules. I'll bring you more details on how you'll be able to play with them and when as soon as I have it, so make sure you're subscribed and perhaps leave me a like while strat it if you'd be so kind. As I say, I've covered most of this month's new stuff already in previous vids, but here's a summary. We've now got night vision goggles. You can get these from the bandit camp for 250 scrap, or research them for 125. They cost 10 high qual and 2 tech trash to craft at a level 2 bench and will last up to 15 minutes on a charge. You refill their batteries at a workbench also, like a diving tank, but every time you do so their maximum charge is reduced a tad, just like real rechargeable batteries. They provide a modicum of protection, but you can't wear anything else on your head with them, apart from a bandana, which is odd because you could imagine a balaclava, or at least bunny ears working with them, but hey ho. They'll let you see things close by pretty well, but the effect reduces with distance. They also emit a green glow when on, so if you see a pair of glowing eyes watching you, you might want to start running. Just to note as well that you can still look down scopes and use binoculars whilst wearing them, and also use them underwater, if that interests you at all. Talking of scopes, there's a new overlay. That's nice. Other new items this month, as discussed already, are an electric heater, which costs 200 francs at a level 1 bench to craft and uses 3 power in return for keeping your bits warm, and 3 new items to help with farming. A pump that can be used to slurp up fresh or salty water, a powered purifier for getting rid of the salt, sadly doesn't work on players, and a fluid combiner, which is the evil twin of the fluid splitter and really shouldn't require any sort of explanation. As well as this, as I mentioned last week, there was a tidy up of monument puzzles to block access to shortcuts and put hackable crates on oil rigs behind red keycards, this also means that now the Chinook will drop them on land once more. Other tweaks have seen an increase to the decay of certain deployables outside of camped range such as solar panels, chairs, sprinklers, water barrels and large furnaces. Minicopters decay more slowly, 240 minutes now instead of 180, and in works in progress, a companion app is on the way to help you know what's going on in-game whilst you're outside when you finally get outside, that is. And as I talked about last week, a new mixing table that seems like it will allow us to make teas and has something to do with applying buffs to our characters is also being worked on, but the exact functionality is yet to be revealed. I just hope it comes with biscuits. Follow me on Twitch where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. You can support me on Patreon, like these amazing chaps on the right, and stay up to date with my content on Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. All the links are down below. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio! Biscuits.